What's up guys, let's try back again. So I figured I'd get a video out of the way since uh, this is the weekend after JDS just knocked the shit out of Cain Velasquez. We got um, Brock Lesnar coming up against um, Reem and of course, you know, I'm picking Reem to win that fight. I'm pretty positive that Reem's going to take Lesnar down and then we're going to see this fight happen. So, and even if it doesn't go exactly that way, eventually we're going to see this fight go down. Uh, JDS and Reem, you know, they're just destined to collide. They're going to fight at some point and... Um, you know, win or lose, whatever happens. Um, so I wanted to do a prediction video about it, talk about the fighters, and uh, give you my opinion on who I think uh, is going to win and my picks for betting. Um, so yeah, I mean, on one hand, we've got JDS. Just won the heavyweight championship. Beat Cain Velasquez. A lot of people thought that Cain was pretty much unstoppable. Cain's got that gas tank and, uh, you know, very well-rounded, hard for anybody to beat, and Junior Dos Santos beat him in a minute and four seconds. It only took a couple shots, and that was it. Uh, one big right hand, and he was down, and finished him up very quickly. So what do we know about JDS? Well, we know he's got some of the best boxing in all of mixed martial arts. Some of the best pure professional boxing with his uppercut, his overhand right. He mixes up his jabs well for MMA. He doesn't leave his, his you know, his arms hanging out there. He doesn't, he doesn't really use kicks either too much. Um, once in a while, a little bit, but, you know, mostly he's, uh, he's dangerous with his hands. He's a boxer. Uh, that's what makes this an interesting matchup. He does have good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and good uh, anti-wrestling. Um, you guys know I kind of like that term, anti-wrestling. He uses his wrestling not to take opponents down, but he uses it to keep them standing up and not go down himself and implement his boxing skills. So, you know, the Rocky of MMA, what else is there to say about JDS? Beating everybody. Finally, we, you know... A new challenger has entered the arena. We've got uh, Alistair Overeem. I mean, Alistair Overeem is the best pure striker in the world. Um, really, no confusion, no question about it. If you guys watched the K1 World Grand Prix last year and you saw what Alistair did to those guys, MMA fighters are not supposed to do that. MMA fighters are not supposed to be able to go over into kickboxing and take the kickboxing world title in a tournament. They're just not supposed to be able to do that, you know. When you are a star in one sport and you're a champion in one sport, you know, how often do you see guys go from, you know, one sport to another and be, you know, one of the best in each or the best in each? It almost never happens. You look at, uh, you know, even uh, Michael Jordan. He tries to play baseball and he doesn't. He didn't do too well. I mean, he did okay. He was able to play, but he certainly wasn't MVP. Alistair Overeem goes over in kickboxing and wins the whole freaking tournament. Knocked out Bader Hari, knocked out Peter Arts, knocked out uh, you know tons of guys. I mean, he's just you know he's just insane. If you guys um, seen his knockout of Ben Edwards, I mean one of the best knockouts ever. Seen his knockout of um, Todd Duffy. Oh my goodness, that was just a that was crazy. Um, you know, is there anybody right now that can stop Al Strovery? I mean, really. The guy is just on this roll in the past couple of years, ever since he became Uberim and you know beefed up like this, and I, I just don't know. Now here's the question about this fight right here. This is obviously going to be standing. We know they're not going to go down. They're not going to uh, you know take each other down. They're going to stand up. They both believe in their styles. Okay, this is like a classic MMA matchup here because you've got a Muay Thai, okay, kickboxer versus a boxer. Now the way I look at it is this: when it comes to fighting, the less restrictions on a fighter in their sport the better that fighter is overall so for example you have James Tony against Randy Couture in MMA you're able to strike you're able to throw punches and kicks you're able to do all these things in boxing it's restricted you can only throw punches and you know whatever else really hardly anything so when you when you take two fighters and one is in a more restrictive style than another you kinda have to go with the guy who is in the less restrictive style Okay, so you have to say, all right, well, in K1, they're allowed to box. Okay, they're allowed to box. But they can also elbow. They can also knee. They can also use kicks. They can also do all of these things. Okay, so when we're comparing both these guys' skill sets, you have to see that when it comes down to it, the odds are in the Reem's favor. Because the Reem is a champion of not only MMA, but also of kickboxing. Junior Dos Santos could come on over in kickboxing if he wanted to as a pure boxer, but, you know, unless he can fight at his range, which usually, you know, boxers would have trouble doing, if you're, if you're a pure boxer and you go into kickboxing, you're probably going to get your ass kicked. That's all there is to it. So, because of that, JDS's chances here are to keep it close. 
Close the distance fast. Use his speed. Get in on Reen. When you're in close, use your speed with your boxing. Don't throw too hard, but use a lot of, you know, throw a lot. Throw fast, as fast as you can, and hope that Reen doesn't hit you with a left or, God forbid, a right hook or an uber knee. Because if he does, the fight is over. Um, either way, I see this fight ending in the first round. Maybe getting to the second round if they both respect each other's power a lot. But I really don't see how anybody could pick Junior Dos Santos in this fight. When you're dealing with two styles, the style that's less restrictive is more effective. That's all there is to it. So, you know, I see Junior Dos Santos getting hit with an uber knee, getting hit with a left or right hook, and going to sleep in this fight, guys. I see it happening. Um, the only way it's not going to happen is if, like I said, he can close the distance, stay out of kickboxing range, avoid the knees, avoid the elbows, and use his, turn this into a boxing match. If he does that, he can win. He can beat Reem. I just... For a prediction, I don't see it happening. Uh, regardless of what the odds are, and they'll probably be in JDS's favor since he is the current champion, I say if you're a betting man, you bet on Reem in this fight. Um, you know, he's just so big, so strong. He's way, he's way bigger than JDS at this point. He's at least 20 pounds heavier, all muscle pretty much. Um, the, only th the only other thing is that JDS could wear him out if he uses his you know, um, five-round fight, his cardio. You know, possibly Reem could gasp because of all that extra muscle. But realistically, you know, when Ben Edwards came at Reem with those punches, Reem just blocked them all and stood right in front of him. And it's like, okay, throw everything you got at me. Ben Edwards threw everything he had at Reem. Reem just stood there. Boom, boom, boom. Hit him a couple times. That's it. He's, he's KO'd. And those are with, that's with big gloves on. That's not with small MMA gloves. Uh, you know, dear God, what Alistair Overeem is going to do to JDS, in my opinion. That's it for now, guys. Let me know what you think. Do you think JDS stands any kind of a chance against Reem? I say no. Uh, let me know what you think. Peace.